Hey everyone, this is Phil here from Northern Wild Harvest. I'm a professional wild harvester and horticulturist from Canada. And on this channel, we do a lot of large scale foraging. We had a number of people request that we film a video showing how we do our pack board setup and how we get mushrooms out of the bush and back to our vehicles. So today I'm gonna to take the time to go over all the details of how I personally set up my pack board for carrying out mushrooms or plants. Now, I'm not trying to gatekeep how you should forage. That's not my intention. I think that it's great that everybody has their own style and techniques while foraging. That's part of what makes it so interesting. And I'm going to show you how I personally do it and what I've learned. And hopefully some of that will work for you or you'll learn something. And if you have something to add, then please comment below and tell us something that you might use for your setup. If you're new to foraging, make sure that you know what the plant or the mushroom is before harvesting. And large scale harvesting like this can't be applied everywhere. The carbon footprint of the average wild morel versus the average carrot or broccoli from your supermarket, the wild mushroom is a much lower carbon footprint. And if you have concerns or you're new to this, we've been harvesting in many of the same mushroom patches myself since I was a little kid. I still harvest chanterelles in the same spots every year. And recently we had some of our best years we've ever had. Very sustainable when done correctly, but it's important to know how to harvest sustainably. So this scale of foraging might not work in your local park like over here. This is something we do in ecosystems that can handle it. For larger scale foraging, I'm using a pack board, these baskets, and then my harvesting bucket. Our buckets do have holes in them. And for mushrooms such as morels, I highly recommend a rigid bucket with holes for a number of reasons. A mesh bag can work great for other species of mushrooms, but morels are much more delicate and you can actually wear off the spore tubes on the outside of the mushroom when you're harvesting large volumes for eight to 12 hours in a day. Uh, when you put this down a hundred times throughout the day, the mushrooms are contained compared to a bag where it has to settle on the ground and get picked up. They'll come out of the bush in much better shape using something solid like this. Not to say you can't use a mesh bag, but for the scale of harvesting we're doing, the quality of our mushrooms when they come out of the bush is one of the most important factors. So the holes will spread spore while we're walking, which is a bonus, but they also will allow some of the debris to filter out or any dirt if it gets into our bucket. If it's raining or if there's some water trapped inside of a mushroom, it has a way of escaping your bucket. These are the baskets that I like to use. Now these can be really hard to get. So they're a food grade plastic basket. So when we're walking out of the bush, again, holes in the bottom and on most of the sides. And they're fairly lightweight and they've got these little holes for putting through zap straps. Sometimes you can get baskets like this that actually have a clip system built into the lid. So you don't have to use zap straps or cable ties to hold the lids on there. And those can be nice. Now, if you're wondering where to get these food grade harvesting baskets, they can be quite difficult to acquire. They're usually shipped in in large container shipments that cost a fair bit of money. If you're interested in harvesting baskets like these, let us know in the comments below so we can gauge whether it's worth it for us to order in a shipment. This is a Tatanka brand short frame. I've mentioned in the past, this back frame is great because when I'm putting this on my back while I'm heading out into the bush and I'm creating a trail, my head sits just above the level of the pack here so that I, I know that if I walk under a branch, if my head can go under, then my pack will make it under. I've also modified this a bit. This is something I really highly recommend. I put on some grip tape here onto the solid frame. When you're putting your first basket on of the day, it helps it stay on there a bit better and it, the metal was slippery without the grip tape. I've actually exploded a bear banger on this backboard and it's still going strong. So don't even ask how that happened. Um, but it happened and the backboard still works. Whether it's a short frame or a tall frame or any brand, you need to adjust your setup to suit your packboard. So next I'll show you what I carry out with me on a day going into the bush. When we're harvesting morels or many other wild mushrooms, 
uh, especially morels, because in a forest fire, the underbrush is burnt away, so you can hike a lot further in a day. So there have been times, many times in the past, where we've walked in up to 15 kilometers from a remote road. And so in a scenario like that, safety becomes a huge concern, because if you hurt yourself, getting out of the bush can be a real challenge. So I'll show you what I bring, and you could always bring more than this, but one of the biggest factors is you're balancing out the, the comfort of having different items and different gear with maximizing how many mushrooms you can carry out, especially if you're doing it to make money. But safety is one of our biggest concerns, so I tend to carry more than most harvesters for this reason. So I'm going to show you the setup for a full 12 to 18 hour day in the bush. So the most I can carry is eight baskets of morels. And they're a lighter mushroom because they're hollow. If I was picking pine mushrooms or even chanterelle mushrooms, that amount, the number of baskets would be significantly less. A basket of morels, a full basket on an average day weighs between 11 and 12 pounds. And so it gives you an idea of how much I'm carrying, plus my gear weight, and lately, a lot of camera gear. So I have my seven baskets and my bucket. So a total of eight baskets because this five gallon bucket is the same exact volume as one of these baskets. So I know when this is full without this extender on here, this will be one full basket. So one basket needs to be dedicated to gear. I'm take this one. These baskets have been sitting for the winter so they need to clean. I'm going to be using bungee cords to carry my weight. This is my favorite and I'll explain why as we go ahead. I tend to harvest with a pair of sacketeers, which are hand pruners. So these are the Felco brand. You don't have to use a nice pair like this. You can use a cheaper pair. And they come with this holster, which is great. So for a lot of other mushrooms, I will use a harvesting knife. But for morels, I use these, and they work great for me. They're really easy to trim your stems. And where we live, you can't have long stems because a lot of the mushrooms get dried. There's a number of reasons for that. If there's a branch hanging down and there's a morel under there, I just get that branch out of my way, or a root. And that is very handy. And then one of the nicest things is just, you can set up your cut nice and flush. So all your cuts, you're coming in flush. And your motion is just that. With a knife, which, use a knife if that's what you prefer. I'm just explaining why I use these. With a knife, you're doing this all day. And I find that motion to be a little more exerting on my wrist here. I find this to be easier. These are very ergonomic. So these will go onto my pack board right there. And they'll sit there until I'm ready to pick. Now, in my gear basket, on a long, on a full day, I bring plenty of water. The environment in the burn is extremely dry and there's no shade. So water is a huge factor. For pine mushroom picking when you're in the rainforest, it's less of a factor. But for morale picking, you drink a lot of water. So I'll show you how much I bring. Quite a bit of water. Sometimes I'll still run out and need more. You know, you can just take them and snap them onto your, your belt loop here. If you want to have it on hand while you're walking away from your pack board. Along with our water is your bear spray. This should be on hand at all times. And one of the ways we do this, I don't always have it on my bucket but it's always close by or we pick in pairs and one of us will have it and so this can go onto your bucket like that or on the outside if you want now you can carry it on your person that that is also that also works especially if you have a holster for it but there have been two times in the past where people we know have punctured the bear spray while it was on their hip so I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but it is something to be aware of. That's why I tend to put it on my bucket. We've never had one puncture off the bucket, but it's just if you fall and it's on your hip, you have your body weight smashing it into the rocks. Uh, if your bucket falls over, you know, it's, it's not gonna puncture this. It's very unlikely it'll puncture this. Another, instead of using the bungee cords, a lot of people will use ratchets and they do work, but I'll explain why I don't use them later on. And then rope is also a nice thing to bring. Uh, both of these work, they're fine. Um, but again, I'll show you why I use these bungee cords. I have a bug net. If the bugs are really bad, I can't wear this while I'm picking. It obscures my vision too much. But 
it's great for when you're hiking out and you've got a full load and you're just hiking for hours. When the mosquitoes are bad, this can be a huge relief. Some of the items in here I will have in my pockets while I'm harvesting, but I've got sunscreen. This is a bit big, but you need some sort of sunscreen. Multi-tool. This is in case I get lost and have to spend a night in the bush. This can be a lifesaver. Compass. Now this stays on at all times. And the way we use this is if you're coming in off of a road and you're going perpendicular to the road, we will set, we'll point it in the direction of our heading where we generally want to go. And we'll put the red arrow into the red inner arrow there. Call that putting red to bed. When you hike out, you flip the compass around and you put white into that same red arrow. So you put white to bed. And that will allow you to hike back out on your line. And you can mark right down the number on here when you put red to bed. So if I'm going this way, the number off the point of my compass is 20 degrees. If this gets bumped throughout the day, I can remember that number, put that back and head out. This problem with this technique is if you veered off too far and the road turns not far from where you left the truck, you can pass the end of the road and then keep going. So that's something to be aware of. But I keep this around on my body at all times. Another navigational tool is a handheld GPS. This thing is great. And I tend to try to use my natural senses to figure out where I'm going and then reconfirm if I'm correct using this. And that's allowed me to hone my my navigation in the bush over the course of a decade, which I highly recommend. This will also show you where you've picked or where you haven't picked. It'll track your line and show topography and water and everything else. Bug spray. If you're using this, walk away from your mushrooms or your plants and then spray it. Don't spray your harvest. Batteries. Another handy tool, if you're picking in pairs, is a radio. And this will allow us to communicate when to meet up for lunch or if somebody's injured. This radio also has a flashlight built in if you do get stuck in the bush at night. I can use these batteries or rechargeable batteries in case the built-in rechargeable batteries die. So both of these share the same AA batteries. This is what I use for tying my lids on my basket. I do keep a knife on me at all times. This sits on my hip. Another whistle, I often keep this on my body as well. And then another tool I keep on my body is a bear banger. This is basically a glorified bottle rocket. I've used this probably 20 or 30 times to scare away wildlife, bears. And you do not want to shoot it at the bear, you want to shoot it up in the air above you and not into a tree. Blow the whistle, then go to the bear banger. If the bear still is being aggressive, then get your bear spray out. This is a piece of fat wood. If I get stuck in the bush at night, this will light up even in the rain and the lighter to go with it. And a life straw. This will filter out water from a dirty source. It does not filter out heavy metal or oil contamination, but it'll filter out most amoebas and bacterias. I had to drink out of a number of really gross looking swamps with this. Uh, that's why I bring so much water because even though I didn't get sick, the thought of getting sick in the middle of a morel season would be horrible. Another thing I bring is a garbage bag. This is basically like, like a really cheap rain poncho if you needed it to be. You can also cover your gear. I'm carrying a lot of camera gear when I'm out in the bush. So if I had to, I could whip this out and cover my mushrooms or my gear. You know, not, not surrounding the mushrooms, but just laying it over my pack board during a really heavy rainstorm. And then flagging tape. So one thing I'd recommend is if you get lost, make a mark on a tree as soon as you realize you're lost and then go within visual distance in every direction, north, south, east, west, and put another mark on the tree, different from your starting mark. And then from there, do that off of each of those points. And if you have enough flagging tape, eventually you will find your way out of the bush. I need to restock this because it's getting low. In here, I've got some safety gear. So you could bring a lot more first aid than this. What we do is we usually pick in, group, in pairs or in groups of three or four, and we usually all bring some sort of safety gear. Um, and I also have a first aid kit back at the vehicle waiting. So I've got this sticky sort of tape. And I, I would use that for taping on a gauze pad if I get a puncture wound or something more serious. A flesh wound. And then I also have afterbite antiseptic 
cleaners, you know, some band-aids for something more superficial, and some waterproof matches. So that's basically all of what I'm carrying out along with my lunch and sometimes a drone. The drone is not an essential, but we'll use that to get to see further into the next valley so we know if it's worth hiking. So yeah, that's generally what I have on my packboard. Another thing to consider is the clothing that you're going to wear when you go into the bush. This shirt, mosquitoes can't bite through it and it's relatively breathable. And then footwear is the biggest concern. So I made the mistake one year of wearing uh, steel shank and steel toed hiking shoes for a few days. And I was concerned about the burnt willows. They create a spike in the burn. If you stepped on one of those with a heavy load, I was worried it would go into my foot. But the trauma to my feet from wearing steel shanked and steel toed shoes and hiking for 30 kilometers in a day was very severe. So I do not recommend steel shank or steel toed boots. Instead, I recommend a solid hiking boot with a good thick layer underneath like this. So if I were to step on a willow, it would not go through this. So you do not need boots this expensive. These boots are $700 Canadian, but they are very solid. These were recommended to me from a forest firefighter. They're the Scarpa Rangel. And they are all one piece of leather here underneath the laces. So they have really nice flexibility and they handle the, the burn, the, the dry ash, caustic ash, a lot better than a cheap pair of boots. I don't recommend picking in these bloodstones for a, a long day. They'll just hurt your feet. So now we're gonna set up the actual pack board and I'm going to mimic what I would do with a full load like you see on our channel in some of our videos. First, I'm gonna show you how it looks when I'm heading out into the bush with no mushrooms. I'm gonna take one lid from my pile here and I'm gonna put that with my gear. The rest are going to go underneath. Now I use these Quonset ties. They're like a little bungee with this plastic ball on the end. For a full load, of morels, which is going to be eight baskets if you include the bucket volume. I've got three sizes of bungees. You wanna make sure you get the bungees that have good solid tensor strength. Some of the cheap ones, they'll they'll max out their tensor strength way too easily. So you want, you want the decent ones, not the cheap ones. And so mine are color coded here. You might think, well, you're just going out into the bush to pick some mushrooms. Why does it need to be so specific? Well, I'll tell you right now, every second counts when you're out there. And when you go to hike out and you're super tired after weeks of living in the bush harvesting, anything you can do to make your life easier before you go out, you will appreciate while you're out there. It all adds up. I've got my three sizes, two green, Four yellow, these are the little big ones, these are little shorties, and then most of what I have are orange. And these are the medium sized ones. So I've got eight of those. Four, eight, and two. So these will act as my main lines. This is the majority of what I'm using for all the laterals and the auxiliary bungees. And then this is mostly for the bucket. I've got seven baskets in the bucket, but I've actually got eight lids. I'll show you why in a minute. One of the lids it's for my gear basket. I'm gonna go to there, and I'm gonna come back. We'll go back to there. Try not to sit with your face over the bungee while you're working with it. So that's just gonna keep those lids there while I'm setting up the rest of my pack board. The rest of my baskets go on, empty. My gear basket inside of there. Hooking down underneath here, and I'm coming up to these top clips here on this pack frame. I go underneath and whenever you're doing this and you're really having to stretch them, really recommend putting your hand somewhere on the middle of the bungee so that if it does give way or just holding it with your other hand, if it does give way, then it's not gonna be the full length swinging back at you. I go through, center it, and then wrap around on either side. And using this technique will really help hold your load a lot better. And it's also safer. So attach that on, 
and again you can adjust this around very easy to adjust and set it where you want now the reason we do this and use bungees is because if you hit a tree with your pack there's some there's a bit of flex with your load which i'll show you once i have my pack fully loaded and so when you're using ratchets like these here or rope and you hit something or you stumble it's just very rigid on your body and there's no shock absorption so we look at bungees kind of like a suspension on your pack board they're also quite light in comparison to ratchets ratchets have this big mechanism on them so i used to use these and i've moved away from it sometimes i'll add some rope if it's a really heavy load spore holes i've got this nice aftermarket handle and the bucket just sits there like that between the two main lines and then we take a green bungee one of these shorter the short bungee and we do the same thing we wrap around and that's just looping around the main line here and do that again and then that can pop over your handle so now that's not coming off it's this bigger handle this locks it in but it's very easy to just pop that off and pull your bucket out if you find mushrooms for your first for your first bucket of the day put that back done so that's what it looks like from the side back on so that's my setup on heading out the rest of these bungees can just fit into this gear basket i don't zap strap this shut it's held enough with the bungees that's another reason that bungees are nice is they have some flex so I can easily just lift up the lid of my basket and grab stuff out of there, no problem. Okay, we've got our stuff back to square one here. Take your gear basket. I'm gonna put that off to the side for a second. Let's pretend that these baskets are full of mushrooms. So, like I said before with morels, I can carry seven to eight baskets. That's my maximum, yours might be different. Don't carry more than you think you can handle because it can become dangerous very quickly. First basket goes on. I'm gonna use these water bottles just to get some weight in the baskets. Pretend that that's a mushroom, full of mushrooms. For this first basket, it's going to be holding the most weight on it of any of them. And what I've noticed over the years is that the first basket, the lid tends to collapse with another six or seven baskets above there. So for the first basket, put two lids on. You want to take your zap straps. I'm just gonna show you one, but you would do this on each basket. Put your lid on there, take your zap strap, cable tie, whatever you wanna call it. Come in from the bottom and up. And then when you put this on, pull it down. That way your strap sits flat down you don't have these poking up everywhere trying to get into your eyeball this is basket two full of mushrooms put that on there if you're really lucky you'll be putting your pack down picking around it and getting a full load but that isn't very common so usually you'll be getting a basket or two and then moving your pack board and getting another basket or two I'll get these strapped on here On there nice and solid tensor strength net the bottom one has two lids the rest just go with one lid you put your next basket full of mushrooms mushrooms another basket full of mushrooms this is where i would use my two main lines we've got them down right off the back of the frame And they're gonna come right onto this top clip. If your pack frame doesn't have that, you can go onto here. We'll do it in reverse this time. Often it's easier to do it this, this way. Back to the medium sized bungee. One 
one. And then our top basket has all of our gear in it and our lunch. And you want to keep that one on top so you can still get at your stuff while you're walking. I'm going to take my other two yellow, my long bungees. If you can't make it down to your frame, this hook can go through the eyelet of your basket and lid. And then this is another reason it's great to have two lids here because you've got an extra lid and all that plastic holding this bungee. Another option, which I'll show you here, is if you can't reach this eyelet or there's too much slack left in your bungee and you want it tighter, you can come down and come right up into the bottom of the basket. So that's all of this plastic holding that. And these are only bonus. Most of the pressure is on these first main lines. This stage, we've got all of our baskets on there. They're pretty solid, but since we have three bungees left, we're just gonna use them to do this again. And you can tie all of your main lines together at this point. Okay, we're almost done here. So by putting these last ones on, that allowed us to tie these two main lines together, right? Not only that, but as you're putting these bonus ones on near the end, you can come up over these less solid bungees that are going through the eyelets. The loop in here. Now we got one more thing to put on. So for the bucket, it's pretty simple. That's where my last two green bungees are for. Somewhere around there. My bucket here has this nice groove, so it can come in like that, and that should sit right over the handle there if it tries to slide. So those are just hooked into the basket with all of this plastic holding them. So that's what a full pack looks like. Now to stand up with this is the hard part. This is where having a somebody you're picking with to help you stand up can really help. Nice if you have a hill sloping like this to work with you. Put on your shoulder straps. As soon as you stand up, the weight of the pack tends to want to pull you down again. Put your hip straps on and the clip, but just do it loosely. Now what I like to do is get somebody to hold my frame as I'm standing up with a load this size. If I have six baskets, it's easy to do on my own, but with seven or eight, a second person can really help. You just get up like this and then try to get onto your knees like that and then up and that's the hardest part so there you go that's a fully loaded pack that's what it looks like and you'll only really have a pack with this many baskets if you're used to doing plants or, or morels in the case of mushrooms i'll share an experience i had one time i was it was a 12 kilometer hike out it was a brutal day I had about 70 pounds of morels on my back, plus the gear weight, so this was, it was pretty brutal. I didn't take enough breaks and I was really tired and I tripped and I fell. And I landed on my knees, right in the soft ash, and I thought for a very split second, oh, I'm okay. And then before I could even think that fully through, the weight of my pack, the momentum, carried my whole upper body down into the ash, face first, and I hit the ash and landed with my face right next to a willow spike. Luckily, nothing terrible happened, apart from some ash in my eye, but it's something to be aware of. Something else I'd recommend is if you've walked in on a straight line, you've loaded up your pack board, and you know you can't carry any more, walk out on the line you came in on. You know you can get out that way. Unless you see a straight shot back to the road, don't make the mistake of thinking you can get a shortcut in and then you hit a field of blow, blown down trees or a bog and every step with a load like this is torturous. So more often than not, it's better just to walk out the way you came in. So that's how I do my packboard setup. Again, this video isn't to tell you what to do, but just to show you how I do things my way. 
and hopefully you learned something from it or there's found something useful in here and if you have other suggestions or your own techniques that you've used feel free to share them in the comments below another thing is if, you, if you're just foraging around the vehicle or not going as far into the bush and you don't need a pack board that's a whole different setup I, you know sometimes i'll wear a little lightweight backpack with my safety gear and the fanny pack in there and just go with the bucket and the sack of tears and bucket pick to the truck and back but this is for going deeper into the bush for a full load when you have to whether you can use some of these techniques or you're just interested to see how somebody gets 100 pounds of mushrooms out of the bush, hopefully this video explained how, how we do it. Another thing you often see is people using quads. Now quads can work great, we've used them lots in the past. I still recommend the bungee cords onto the quad because when we've run buying stations in the past, we have seen it to where people bring in mushrooms from a brutal quad ride, they're covered in water and all the gills have just shaken right off the mushrooms. So when you're riding a quad full of mushrooms, be very aware of keeping them safe and protected in your baskets. Go, if you're 4x4 and go slow. Stay safe out there and happy harvesting.